I'm going to show you this process using the ADMS FT1D programmer. But the process is the same for the FT1D, the FT2D, the FTM400, the FTM100, the FTM3200. And while we know that there was an upgrade for the FT70, it was not as complicated and this process is not needed, although it never hurts to do this. I'm going to take you out to our web page for some reference material. I'm going to go to the knowledge base. This is rtsystemsinc.com. I'm going to search for FTM100, September firmware upgrade. This is the process that I'm going to be following. So if you want to print this so you can go through it step by step, you are more than welcome to. Back in the FT1D program, the main changes took place in the settings file under group monitoring and messaging right here in groups. This is the big change that they made. This is what it used to look like when you were setting it up. And notice it still does. So now that I've done the firmware upgrade on the radio and I have my programmer ready, I want to send these frequencies back to it. In the program, I go help and check for updates. There's an update that's needed. I close the program and tell it to update. All done. I run the FT1D program again and I'm ready to send this to the radio. But I can't do communication send data to radio at this point. If I do, I'll get an error message that the file and the radio don't match. There are some things we can get only from the radio. So the next thing I do is File New. And notice I have two tabs up here now. That one's got my frequencies. This one doesn't. That's to protect my frequencies. And I do communications, get data from radio. I've done all these steps. I tell it OK. I press the band key and we're off and running. Successful. And when we go to settings, radio menu settings, you will notice that group monitoring and messaging is different. These are your new digital IDs, your personal digital IDs, and your personal digital ID list. When I come back to my original file and I'm ready to send it to the radio, there's something I've got to watch out for. Settings, radio menu settings. This screen changed. And if I don't have a file that I've saved, my call sign may have been lost. So just make sure you double check that and set it up. And you might want to do some setup in your group monitoring and messaging, which is done on this screen. Then we're, the, we're going to save it. And now I've captured all the new things about it. And I do communications, send data to radio. And my radio is all ready to go. And I tell it OK. And again, we're off and running. While this is working, let me talk just a minute about doing this with the SD card. All four of these, or four of the five of these, the FT1D, the FT2D, the FTM100, the FTM400 can be programmed using an SD card. But again, out to my web page while that's working. And this time we're going to go to the See It Done videos. We're going to go down to Yezu, Programming the FT1D with the SD card, Programming the FT2D with the SD card, Programming the FTM400 with the SD card, which is very similar to the FTM100. 
you need to go back through this process of write to SD. And in the program, you need to transfer it into the program, just like I did the get data from. And that then tells the program that the radio has been upgraded. Then you can put your file back on your SD card and read it back into the program. So don't omit that step, just like when the radio's new. You did a firmware upgrade and you basically made a new radio out of it. So you need to transfer the information from the radio to the SD card and then do communications, read from SD card before you can write to it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. The radio is programmed up and ready for me to use. And if you have questions, we're there six days of the week to help you with them. Give us a call. This is Karen, K0RTX, hoping I helped you with these radios and with enjoying the hobby a little bit more. Have a good one.